sponsored and give you the absolute latest facts on the outbreak straight from the source. So we asked Governor Ducey and the director of the Department of Health Services, Dr. Kara Chris, to join us live in studio. Uh, good to see both of you. We know it's an extremely busy time, so we appreciate you coming in. And Governor, I know that you've had a busy day. You just signed uh, SB 1051, which provides $55 million in funding for health officials like Dr. Christ to help fight the virus. Tell us more about that. Well, first, I want to say that uh, combating COVID-19, the coronavirus, is my top priority. It's my team's top priority. It's Dr. Kara Christ's top priority. We wanted to make certain that we have dollars available so whatever is necessary across state government, we can address this. We had a declaration of emergency yesterday a law, along with an executive order so that we could coordinate across state government. Now we're at a place where risk is considered low at the state level, although the risk has been heightened and the spread has been minimal, but I've left the health decisions up to the subject matter experts. I want to make sure that they have the resources and the authorities to make the proper decisions to protect public health in the state of Arizona. All right, Governor. Let's face it, things are being canceled by the hour, it seems like, these past couple of days. People are stockpiling. There's definitely this sense of fear and panic. People are staying home from work. Schools are closing. What do you want to tell the people of Arizona? Because honestly, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't a little scared myself. Well, I understand. I mean, I hear that fear and concern as well. We are working 24-7. I'm brie being briefed in the morning and in the evening with continuous updates so that we can follow the facts and make the proper decisions. Now, my director of health services, Kara Christ, is, is uh, an, an infectious disease epidemiologist. She's a medical doctor and a public health expert. She guided Arizona through H1N1, through Ebola, through the measles outbreak, and so far so good in terms of where we are on this, but the, the situation on the ground is changing hourly, and that's why we want to make sure we have all hands on deck so that we can do everything we can to protect public health, public safety, and to make certain that people have the facts on what's important and what they should be doing and what they should be concerned about. Dr. Christ, um, let, let's talk about testing because a lot of people want to know if they start showing symptoms, what they can do, and if there are enough tests. Today in Washington, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases said at a House hearing, the system is failing when it comes to providing enough tests for states. No state in particular, but overall, that the U.S. was not prepared for this. Do you agree? So we definitely are looking for ways to increase capacity through testing. Luckily, here in Arizona, we have several partners that are coming online with tests of their own, such as TGen, Mayo. We have LabCorp and Quest online. What we're looking now to do is how do we get people actually tested so that they can run those labs? Well, and speaking of the testing, I mean, the people being tested has been growing steadily. As of Friday, last Friday, 56 people were tested, 84 on Monday, 100 on Wednesday. Now, as Mark just mentioned, it stands at 115. Are the medical facilities getting enough of these test kits that they need? Because, let's face it, the CDC was criticized for a week's long de delay in getting these test kits to the proper agencies. So is Arizona prepared? Are, do we have enough test kits? So we're working right now to get those test kits out. And so it's the same test that you basically run for influenza. It's the back of the throat or the back of the nose. Um, we had a really significant influenza season. And so now we're, we're looking at this in addition to that. So we're working with our federal partners on getting more. Governor Ducey, uh, we promised to take some, some viewer questions, and, and this viewer has a good one. He, he wants to know about large public gatherings, and we have casino gambling all across the state. As the governor of Arizona, when it comes to tribal things like casinos, do you have any sway there? Well, I want to say we have sway in terms of the declarations we can make and the executive orders that we put out. 
the vulnerable populations right now are the elderly that have an underlying health issue. And that's why at retirement homes, assisted living homes, those types of situations, we want to make certain that people are being temperature checked, they're washing their hands, they're being seen that they are free from influenza or a disease before they are able to visit. In terms of what happens in a casino or large public g gatherings, I've deferred to Dr. Christ. And in Arizona at this time, our guidance has not been to stop that type of situation at this time. Dr. Chris, we have another Text Team 12 viewer. And this echoes of what a lot of people are experiencing right now in terms of some of the symptoms, and they're a little worried. This viewer says, I'm at home in bed with a sore throat, cough, and fever. Should I wait it out? or contact my primary care doctor. So most people are gonna recover from flu or COVID-19 with mild symptoms can be treated at home with over-the-counter medications. However, we would caution that individual that if they have an underlying medical condition or are elderly, contact their healthcare provider and see if they want them to come in. They'll arrange when they can come in safely to see if we can get them tested. And, and along those same lines, um, countless healthcare workers have been complaining that they have not been able to get masks because there was such a large run on these masks that overwhelmed the supply for them. We got a question from Dr. Vanessa Tartaglia in Glendale who writes, why don't we have masks? We're on the front lines every day and we are so unprepared. We have no N95 and only one box of 10 regular masks. Staff is scared and they don't want to see anyone sick. Mm -hmm. uh, now they don't have their own protection. It's a good point. That is, and when the CDC makes a recommendation for N95s, they're, they're not normally used for in-office procedures and seeing patients. They're used for very specific instances. What we would recommend is if you have a surgical or a medical mask, that you can wear that when you see the patients as well. While the CDC is recommending an N95, a, it is droplet precautions and the providers can go to that type and of And as long as we're talking about masks, maybe just a message to to the public that if you're healthy, wearing this mask is not going to protect you. If you're sick, you're showing symptoms, you're hacking, that's when you should wear the mask, correct? That is correct. We do not have a recommendation that the general public should wear masks right now. It gives you a false sense of security and you touch your face a lot more. If you are symptomatic or have been told by your healthcare provider to wear a mask, then you can go ahead and wear the surgical, the, the droplet precaution mask and save those other masks for our healthcare workers. This is a good question from Brad in Phoenix. He says, how do we tell the difference between seasonal flu and the coronavirus? So that is a great question because they are very similar in the way that they present. So 80% of people are going to have a mild uh, course of COVID-19 and the symptoms are exactly the same and the treatment is exactly the same except we have more tools in the toolbox for influenza. So if you can stay home and recover using over-the-counter medications, we recommend that you stay home for 24 hours after your symptoms subside without medication. Another question for the governor, uh, we saw the Alhambra School District announced that as of Monday it's closing. Uh, do you have any plans or are you watching other school districts across the state? We just had a conference call with 400 leaders from our school system across the state, both urban and rural. We wanted to talk about the guidance that we had from the state level and that was again deferring to public health that we can keep the schools open at this time. But there are certain leaders that have a situation in their school district, and of course they have local control and can make those decisions. But because of the vulnerable population being age 60 and older and having underlying health issues inside our school systems, we believe that it's responsible to keep them open at this time. And, and what would you say to parents who, you know, they, they feel anxious? And, and I think I would feel the same way if I had young kids, uh, maybe a child who's an asthmatic or a an allergic kid, what would you say to parents? Well, I'm a parent as, as well, and I want to make certain that my kids and all of our kids are in a safe position. So if someone is sick, if they have these symptoms, they should be staying home. If that isn't the case, then we're in a position where these children can go to school, and I don't know if Dr. Christ wants to add more to that, because if we were to have everyone congregate somewhere outside of schools, there are other consequences the state would have to deal with. And Dr. Christ, before we go, you know, you've seen it all over the place. Whether you go to the grocery store, whether you go to Costco, everywhere, people are stockpiling. Mm -hmm. Products are being sold out. Empty shelves everywhere. 
What do you want to tell the people? I mean, should they be stockpiling for this two-week supply or don't sound the alarm just yet? Just stay calm, do your daily shopping, don't overbuy. What do you want to say to them? So I would recommend if you have specific medications or over-the-counter medications that you would need if you were sick, too sick to get out of the house. Having a good supply of those is a good idea. I am not currently stockpiling. Um, and I would not make that recommendation right now, but if there are certain things you need, make sure you have them on hand. Governor, we are living through a historic time in this country, and you are, are piloting the ship for our state. Uh, good luck. It's, it's a treacherous journey right now. Thank you. We're going to be calm and steady and act with a sense of urgency to protect public safety. You can count on it. Urgency 